We want to think of the drawing in parts as preparation, beginning, middle, and end. Drawings happen over time. It doesn't happen all at once. Simple things precede complex things. We draw from general to specific. We act and think different at different points in the timeline, at different points in the drawing. Earlier things inform later things. Later things challenge and restructure earlier things. It's a process of discovery, a result of your concentration and focus, and reveals the clarity of your thinking. Visual thinking, visual ideation, visual discovery, the visual idea. Welcome back, friends. In these drawing breakdown videos, we want to see how multiple approaches to finding proportion can be used together. We are thinking about approaches that get us on the visual field, things like point vector, sight measuring, using vertical and horizontal trace, construction lines and construction points, checking angles. So as we watch this drawing develop, notice that each system is distinct. So checking angles follows the checking angles guideline which are, put your eyes on a point in space, put your pencil on a point on your page. Now that point on the page represents that point in space. This point is an anchor for the angle. We will be thinking of the angle in reference to a clock face, and we pause at the anchor point, analyzing the angle. We will be moving our eyes from the anchor point to where we want it to go, along the angle's path and glancing down at the paper, looking for where that angle would go on our page. We haven't yet made any marks. This is the moment between the, the beats, you know, like the beats in a song, that pause. This pause allows us for thinking, for analyzing the angle. It is a rhythm that we use in our making to slow us down, to let us find where we are and where we're going. When we see it, then we draw through the angle. We are drawing and keeping our eyes on the subject, and our hand is following our eyes. This angle becomes a construction line, and then we check it. The most accurate way to check the angle is with two straight objects, finding the angle off of a horizontal or a vertical. Let's take a look at a few other examples. In this drawing, you can see that they're thinking about the angles found in the center of the mass. And in this one, those angles become a straight line construction. Notice how the curves of the body have been reduced to straight lines. This reduction of curves to angles will allow you to use point vector and sight measuring to be more accurate with proportion. If you reduce the curve to a series of straight lines first, then you've reduced it to an angle that can be more easily checked. A curve is just a continuously changing angle. So if you get into trouble, it's hard to locate where the line is going astray. Also, and this is especially true when drawing the figure, we have a tendency to accentuate the curves. Using point vector, straight line construction, and checking your angles will allow you to bring more realism to your drawing. In this drawing by Giacometti, you can see him using the angle to locate the relationships between the forms. This drawing is also a great representation of the way that the artist is looking when they're making a drawing. 
I like to think of this drawing as a map of the visual pathways that the artist took in order to compare the relative relationships of the still life objects. Let's quickly review how checking angles can be used to find proportion. This is called point vector. The idea here is that I can use two known points and the angles extending from those known points, and if the angles are accurately checked, then where they cross will give me the third point. So here we have angle A, starting from the top of the ear and passing through the corner of the eye. And here we have angle B, starting at the point of the chin and also crossing through the corner of the eye, which, where they cross, gives us point C. So that's several different uses and ways to apply checking angles when you're building a drawing. Here we see sight measuring, followed by the use of both vertical and horizontal trace. With sight measuring, you want to lock your elbow, put the tip of your pencil on the visual edge of one of your objects that you have already drawn, then use your finger to mark the visual width and compare it with the point or object that you want to find. Remember the relationship and then go back and map it on your page. For sight measuring to be most effective, begin your drawing with a key. In the end, everything in your drawing just needs to relate to everything else. A key is a useful tool because if you get into trouble, then you'll always be able to rely on that first measurement. In this drawing, I use the height of the teapot as the key. So as I'm building, the network of relationships I'm building out from the key, and this brings us to that vertical and horizontal trace. It's just a vertical line and a horizontal line, which is a construction line to just show and reveal the alignments between objects that are further away visually. Here we have an example of sight measuring. We've put a box around the beat. And then we've used those vertical traces to mark off how many beats it takes to go across the other forms. Notice we're not restricted to a single form there. And also it might not be like a very clear kind of division, but you just remember one beat equals from the back of the shoe to that spot on the buckle. Then from the spot on the buckle, to the little bump on the squash. Here we've got a you and Ooglo painting. And Ooglo has been kind enough to go ahead and put those construction points right in and leave them in the final image so that we can see his thinking and all the measuring that he's doing as he's building that image. If we look closely, we can also see the notional space, that flat circle, and the way that the planes of light and shade around the globe of the light start to create that sense of a volume. Notice how those shapes are discrete, flat shapes. So the overall effect is of this light bulb with the light and shade slowly transitioning as it falls over it, but notice that the shapes themselves are actually very clear. They're clear shapes with soft edges. Here's another you and Uglo still life, and we see a very similar approach. While we can't as easily see those little tick marks like in the last one, but you can still see the logic and the thinking. Then you get those forms being broken down into planes. And here's you and Uglo with the same approach, but this time with the figure. And with this one, we can again see, you know, the, the little tick marks, right? The construction points and construction lines. 
want to encourage you to put those construction points and construction lines right into your drawings. A contour drawing, focusing primarily on outer contour here, and again you can see some of those measuring points. Here's a Jennifer Meanly drawing of an interior of a classroom, a little bit closer to some of the subject that we'll be drawing. And this one too, where we can see not only site measuring taking place, but it's nice to see this division of the picture plane, where here Morzuk is just dividing it into quadrants, roughly into quadrants, Typically, we'll be using a division of thirds and dynamic symmetry. But you can see as he's building that form, since those construction lines are still visible, you can see him using checking angles, uh, probably some triangulation going on there, drawing through the forms, so construction lines and construction points. So we've seen how we're using our drawing systems together to build the image. What I think is so great about this approach to drawing is that you always have a way out. You always have a drawing buddy. A way to unstuck ourselves in those tricky proportional moments. If I'm struggling to get the proportion of an object, then I'm going to try it three times. But if I've tried it three times with one system, say sight measuring, then I'm going to stop sight measuring and I'm going to attack it from a completely different angle maybe actually checking angles or using point vector. Using a different proportion finding system can, to, can allow us to more quickly uncover the minor inconsistencies. These drawing systems give us the opportunity to see and think about the subject in a new way. From positive form to negative shape. From the alignment and overlap of objects to the way that they are embedded in an underlying geometric armature in the composition. Which brings us to the last point we want to make in our video today. What we see happening here is some of the beginning being brought into the middle. I'm using the compass to reassert the dominant diagonal, which was one of the main visual ideas that attracted me to this composition in the first place. We want to periodically interrupt ourselves as we're working on the drawing to reflect back on our original intention and to bring that as a renewed focus. Let's take a look at that Ewan Uglo still life. Let's take it and drop it into Photoshop and see if we can make the point there. So, we, look at this, we looked at this image paying attention to the way that you and Uglo uh, uses careful measuring to build the forms, and how that careful measuring relates to flat shapes, and then how the flat shapes relate to volume. But we also want to look at an image like this and consider how it sits inside the picture plane to think about its composition. Since we were just using uh, and thinking about dominant diagonal, for me, in this image, the dominant diagonal, or the most obvious diagonal, is that edge of the table. Let's take a line right along that edge, and let's see what kind of coincidence you know, this line can show us in the image. So I see it, of course, there, dominant diagonal, the most obvious one. But let's just take a look. So I see the edge of the pot here lining up with the overlap of this onion and the handle. The bottom of the back handle lining up with this dark spot in between the onions. Lining up with the overlap of the glass and the cloth. And lining up with the pattern and then the glass again. Again, we see the, the tablecloth dropping behind the glass, and then this bottom part of the glass lining up with this edge of the onion, 
and then the shadow of the onion. Oh, there it is in the shadows on the ground plane, you know, lining up with the glass again. And maybe that's it over here on the pattern on the cloth, which, you know, is kind of parallel to the edge of the table. So what we're looking for, you know, are just those chance alignments, right? But those chance alignments start to build in that rhythm of the dominant diagonal. Maybe not a full gamut there, but maybe let's look at dynamic symmetry. Okay, so here we have a phi grid, and I took a look at some of those, uh, some of different root squares, and I think that really it's the phi grid that is the most convincing to me in terms of uh, the composition and the number of different places uh, that I find it um, as it scales up. So, you know, first we've got just these two onions that sit perfectly within the phi grid divided right down the right down the center. But then if we scale it up, you know, then the next kind of grouping that I find is from the edge of the picture plane, you know, to then encapsulating this main figure grouping. You know, these three, um, two onions in a pot. And of course, you know, we want to think about and see, you know, the clear kind of triangle that those things are creating. But then also, you know, from there to the edge of the page, we get our uh, a phi grid. Then as we keep going, you know, the next, the next one that I just think is incredible, and that for me just proves that Uglo, Uglo was using this phi grid to create this composition at some point, is the way that that division along the bottom of the picture plane actually puts the whole image into the phi grid, right? And look at the where, look at the places that this image is locking into the grid. So that just means those key points that the phi grid will show us, you know, it's like what information is being located at those key points. You know, so we've got the edge of the table. We've got the dead center. You know, down here on our thirds, we've got one of the onions, but it's like just that highlight of that onion, you know, radiating out from there. Then we've got the, um, uh, the cup lining up with that lower third, but then also right there on our key point, and then the pattern on the key point. For me, it seems really clear. This, this pattern on the cloth, you know, lining up with our our sinister angle. Okay. <laughs> if that doesn't convince you. In this drawing, we are focusing on the visual field, imagining it as a flat picture plane, using flat shapes to create an interconnected network of known points. As the drawing progresses, we take greater risks because we have built in the foundation of the drawing itself a system of relationships, a web of reference. We are not drawing things, we are drawing about relationships the ways that objects create an illusion of space through overlap, scale, atmospheric and linear perspective, the illusion of moving back in space as shapes move up the picture plane.
We seek drawing systems that can become self-checking, ring out minor inconsistencies, the minor errors, the unfocused and lazy moments. We seek drawing systems that are robust. We seek to become resilient. It is not about precision. It is about this seeking, then seeking again. The rueful self-reflection of the sentence, it seemed like a good idea at the time. We become skeptical of our former selves, of the information that we find on the page in this moment. These drawing systems are forgiving, and we can use them to forgive ourselves. The structure in these drawing systems allows us to let go our preconceived notions of completeness, allows us to see meaning as emergent and understood in the receiving and not in what is motivating the making. For us, ambiguity is a feature, not a bug, unless we slip into a confusion. Our embrace of the messiness is the chaos that we can either ride or control. We can create our own way and ride it to the beach. This is a process of sharing, a process of discovery, a process of collaborating with yourself to teach yourself, to teach yourself about your patterns of thinking, about your awareness, to teach yourself how to draw.